Welcome to the Horse Talk Show. You never heard of a talking horse? With your host, Louisa Barton. I want to be a famous rider. I should like to race. Presented by Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital. Truth is, I help horses with people problems. Now here's the Brit on the bit, Louisa Barton! Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. The Larson family has been farming hay in Idaho for generations with a mission to always provide high quality hay products at a fair and reasonable price. Larson Hay loves to meet new customers while always honoring the ones they already have. Find Larson Hay on the web at larsonhay.com, like them on Facebook, and definitely visit one of their locations. Larson Hay, Idaho's finest alfalfa, and our television broadcast sponsor. The Horse Talk Show broadcasts from the CEP's equine studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital. Thank you for joining us on the Horse Talk Show this week, presented by Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. Thank you to Larson Farms, a TV broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. I'm Louisa Barton, host and executive producer of the show, and in the studio with me I have my co-host, Maria Lacasse from Midnight Rose Equestrian. Lovely to have you back with us. Hello. Maria does massage for people and horses, and she does a fine job. And I am so overdue that um, I've really missed her. <laughs> but we've both been rather busy. busy. Story of my life. This is why it's great to schedule in advance and then plan it. The and self-care portion. It. Yes, that's, it's rather important. Because it usually gets lost. <laughs> Well, we've got a great show lineup for you today. We're going to have a vet segment coming up after this with Dr. Adam Kayot. Uh, after that, we're going to have Carissa Wickens in the studio with us. And I think that Brenda from Heart of Florida Youth Ranch is also going to be with us. And we're going to talk a bit um, about a hay project that's very interesting with some peanut hay. And then after that, we are going to have um, actually some pre-recorded time with a top trainer here in the area, Nick Demerick, sharing with us some of his uh, great stories. Always love to have Nick with us, and that seems appropriate. Coming up to the Breeders' Cup, since it was a uh, Jackie and Nick Demerick trained horse that won the Classic last year, and then was actually Horse of the Year himself. So um, that is pretty special stuff, and we got to meet him, and hearing from Nick about how they do all of that so well is very interesting. But first of all, some announcements. Let's start off mentioning the Hobby Horse Equestrian name uh, Games presented by Everglades Equipment Leesburg, your local John Deere dealer. This is going to be a lot of fun. This will be. You are going to sweat in a jacket. Yes. Uh, for fine. dressage. Yes. And you are going to help Kayla van der Walt, mm -hmm. who actually went to the Paralympics for right. dressage. And the two of you are going to team up to do what are you gonna do you're gonna do dressage, dressage yeah. on a stick horse hopefully i don't bring my spooky horse that day although that'll be entertaining <laughs> <Will do. laughs> there's going to be some vendors um some demos some food trucks hay rides courtesy of larson hay so you know it'll be good hay that's in the hay ride uh we're gonna have a few demos going on there's going to be a horsemanship demo a driving demo which is actually not on this because that got added later and that should be amazing i think we're going to have a shire and an icelandic Ooh. um are going to do a driving demo for us so we can learn a little bit about that um all breed parade will be at 2 30 uh free admission which is absolutely phenomenal for all ages um any um donations that come in during that day are going to go to the equine disaster fund to benefit horses and their owners in South Florida. Uh, the Invictus um, real estate horse parade should be phenomenal. We've usually got a great variety of breeds that will come out and kind of show off. I want to thank the Florida Horse Park um, for supporting us in this. And then the Ocala Polo Club is going to do a polo match on stick horses at the end of the day, which should be a lot of fun. 
and the sports that you will be able to learn from top equestrians and then compete from the safety of a stick horse show jumping dressage horse racing reining roping barrel racing and polo and we've actually got ribbons and medals too Ooh. and for the little kids we've got the little briar collectibles oh. so we have lots of fun fun things going on that day um, lots of dance to meet and greet near the Everglades VIP area with some of the different horses that are going to come a little bit before the parade so that you can meet them and uh, take a photograph with them and this is all part of the equine initiative at the Chamber and Economic Partnership presented by Piranha. And we just felt that there's so many people who are a little bit intimidated by trying horse sports. And then there's other people who are intimidated about going to horse events because they don't really understand the rules or the goal or what what is the person doing with the horse and what are they trying to accomplish and is that right did that look right were they well, supposed to do that so many people that are like do you have to like pay like to go to world equestrian center just to go watch our shows and it's like no no you can just go right on over there and enjoy yourself so how nice it would be if you could next time you go to world equestrian center to watch a show you actually know right. how to do that particular sport so we thought this was a great edutainment opportunity mm -hmm. where we could educate you and also make it kind of fun and entertaining but don't feel that the stick horse games are only for children because we are going to have a couple of categories we're going to have adults and then we're going to have big kids and then we're going to have little kids so if you want to compete you can compete against adults and then if you're middle high school kind of age you can compete against one another and then our younger children in the elementary schools can compete against each other that way it kind of keeps it a little more fair and gives the um, adults at least a chance to win because <laughs> <laughs> most of the kids will outdo you at most of these sports i promise you i see it in the show ring all the time oh yes. there's a four-year-old cool that's great that you're a better writer than i am <laughs> <laughs> yes there's that there is that yeah. Uh, so I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it'll be a very enjoyable event and the fact that we'll be fundraising. Um, so no charge to get in um, to the park for the event, but we will have a, um, you know, a bucket that we can take donations in. You can make checks to CEP Foundation or you can bring cash in an envelope and mark it for the Equine Disaster Fund and we'll take that. And then also for our food trucks, rather than charging our food trucks that day, we've just asked them if at the end of the day they would take a portion of their profits and donate it. And they've agreed to do that because we feel that's much more beneficial for those in South Florida who have um, are still... Uh, suffering through the aftermath of Ian. So what else do I have for news? I have Stirrup and Stirrups and Strides Therapeutic Riding Center's annual event. We've been mentioning this every single week. Uh, in Cowboy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I told you, but the Horse Talk Show is a media sponsor. Oh, so we have a table. Yay. So we have to do this. I see the line dancing. Line dancing's fun. Uh, are you good at that? I can be. Okay, good, because I'm not, but it's okay. As long as I'll, somebody else is drinking and watching me. Uh, uh, like, if they're uh, drunk, uh, I look great. Uh, got it, okay. So that then you're a good dancer. Yeah. Got it. Uh, that's December 3rd, Saturday, and that is at the Highway 318 address in Citra. And uh, this will be under their covered arena. Tickets are $75, or you can sponsor an entire table, or you can just get a sponsorship for this event. Uh, the early bird is 4 p.m., the event is 5 to 9 p.m. Country dancing to stepping line dancing. They have bull rides. Bull rides. This will be entertaining. <laughs> it's many years since I did the bull riding. I don't know about all that. Uh, very, very, very fun, though, and um, and really a good time. And the proceeds all go to benefit Stirrups and Strides Therapeutic Riding Club, which is a phenomenal organization, 501c3, um, that does so much for both disabled children and adults, as well as our veterans, and um, just a great program. And to add to that, Maria mm. is going to try to dress up as Dolly Parton. Diva like Dolly, the same evening, $20 entry fee for this, and finalists chosen by our judging panel of community leaders will compete in a final Dolly tune lip sync for the crowd. And I'm one of the judges, so um, 
I think this could be interesting. I think Dancing Pete Rhoda should shave his goatee and dress up as Dolly Parton. What do you think? I support this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the noise that means we have to wrap up this segment. We're coming right back with Dr. Adam Kayot in the very next segment. Andrew Smith. Or not. Andrew Smith. Dr. Andrew Smith. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dr. Andrew Smith. He's one of the new vets of Peterson and Smith. Here, you're going to meet him. Stay with us. show is brought to you in part by DAC Vitamins and Minerals of Florida. All horses need a solid immune system, excellent joint support, a healthy gut, and DAC has all the vitamins and minerals they need with the NASC stamp of approval. So like them on Facebook now or go to feeddac.com. DAC, it makes a world of difference. With over 70 years of collective experience in the horse industry, Lipchip was built with integrity by horsemen for horsemen. Introducing the Chip Link system, powered by Lipchip, where a 15-digit unique ID becomes a key to unlock not only identity, but also health paperwork, owner information, and even photos of each horse. So simple, even a child can do it. The future is here. The future is Lipchip. Dutton, Grand Prix show jumper and previously international event rider coming to you from Notting Hill Stables in Ocala, Florida. Here at Notting Hill Stables we use Equine Therapy International PMF ActivoMed blankets on all of our show jumpers. These help to relax muscles and promote blood flow and circulation. We use the ActivoMed blanket on a daily basis as well as at competitions. It helps us a lot at competitions, especially before they start jumping. The tense horses really like it because it just helps to relax their muscles so they feel ready and confident to go in the ring. After the horses have jumped, we like to put it on and it really helps with recovery. I would highly recommend Equine Therapy International and all their products for all your therapeutic needs.
The Horse Talk Show broadcasts from the CEP's equine studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. I'm Louisa Barton with the Horse Talk Show and Equus Television on all smart TV networks here at Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. And I don't have Dr. Adam Kayot. I actually have a gentleman here with us who is new to Peterson and Smith. And we would like you to know his face, hear his voice, and learn a little bit about his background. So I have Dr. Andrew Smith. DVM here with us. He has a lot of other initials behind his name and we'll put those up here for you, um, but I'm not going to say them all. He also did some cutting uh, and so he's actually an equestrian from a young age and we're going to talk a little bit more about Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith, thank you so much for joining us and welcome uh, to Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. I don't think you could be at a better veterinarian hospital than this. Thank you. And welcome to the horse capital of the world. We've got a lot of um, a variety here. You've been here for about a year and a half. Is that right? No, I just got here like here. I just uh, just got here like three weeks ago. Oh, my gosh. So you're new, new. Yes, yes. Okay. What do you think of our weather? Well, I was in Gainesville for 10 years, so it's it's yeah. fine. Uh, but uh, anyways, it's it's uh, just waiting for it to stop raining. Yes, right. So tell us a little more about your background. You were riding at a young age. Yeah. So I guess I got the horse bug from my dad. Um, he started out roping and then, uh, went to cutting horses and, um, I guess, you know, I got on a horse, liked it, kept going. Uh, and then when most everybody else was going to spring break or, or, um, college, I, I, uh, started training cutting horses for a couple of years. And then, uh, my parents finally said, you need to go to college, nothing else. And then, uh, you know, 10, 12, 15 years later. They told me I needed to get out of college. <laughs> so anyways, um, uh, you know, I vet school, you know, when I went to undergrad, <clears throat> I started out at community college because I didn't have enough, good enough grades to get anywhere else out of high school and then worked my way to Virginia Tech and didn't have a, I mean, I always wanted to be a vet, but the thought that I was actually going to do it was never really, you know, at the beginning, I guess, wasn't there. Uh, but I guess I went to undergrad kept getting good grades and uh, then I realized that I probably could get into vet school. So I uh, got there and that's pretty much when I, how like I stopped riding horses and started becoming a veterinarian. So I guess uh, somehow I thought if I was, uh, a, you know, if a veterinarian, I could still ride horses, but you know, too much time, but I spent all the time with horses. So it's still <laughs> kind of the same deal. What do you think made you want to be a vet? I don't know. I, I, you know, it's the same story as everybody else. Love horses. Uh, don't like people very much, but um, <laughs> I, you know, horse people are usually pretty good. Um, and, you know, the people that really love their animals, I think those are the people that, I, you know, I really like and, uh, and I really work hard to, you know, help the horses out. Um, and so those are the, you know, those are the kind of the big deals uh, is to, you know, help the animal. And like I said, it's probably the same as everybody else's story. So nothing exciting there. So you've been here at Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital in complete care for about three weeks. So you've got to see the facility and meet a lot of the staff. What are some of the real standout things that you have found since you've been here that just really encourage you that you're in the right place with such a fantastic operation? Well, I, th I think, you know, it, it, this this place is um, the amount of, you know, how the staff works together with the number of horses that come through here and well, somehow, you know, this whole thing works. Like, uh, I'm still figuring out all the quirks and bumps of of, uh, uh, of the system. Um, it's a bit different than the systems I've been to, but it, I think the reality is it's uh, oiled in the sense that it uh, it's to work well in a system with this when there's this many horses, patients coming through. Yeah. So, and I like I said, it's. Um, it's a new system to learn, but it, it works, it works well. And I think all the techs, residents, interns, um, and, um, everybody here works for, to help out the horse. So like I said, yeah. Now, um, all veterinarians or at least most seem to have a specialty. Can you share a little bit with us about yours? Yeah. So, yeah, I guess, you know, I started, uh, 
as an equine surgeon, just like everybody else. But uh, I guess my specialty would be like I've kind of branched off for several other uh, avenues, uh, mostly because uh, I did a PhD in uh, at University of Florida in uh, osteoarthritis imaging, and I was very much sports medicine and orthopedic uh, minded, lameness minded, and uh, the the job that I took was uh, soft tissue a soft tissue surgeon. So I still wanted to do the lameness, still wanted to do the uh, orthopedic surgery. So I was trying to figure out ways in which I could get that to be done. And so nobody at UF at the time uh, was, it just, I wouldn't say nobody. It just so happens at the time that they were looking for somebody to work with um, Dr. Rick Redden. Uh, he wanted to sponsor somebody to go to his course. And so I ended up getting into podiatry that way. I uh, went to several of his courses, started the program there at UF for a little while, and um, did pretty well. So podiatry kind of took off that way. And right about the same time, I also thought, well, <clears throat> if I'm the only one here doing uh, chiropractics, then I'm then I'm bound to get lamenesses. So I went and got certified in chiropractics. Um, and so I was kind of wheezing my way back into orthopedics that way. But the reality is I still did uh, – you know, my still my sole job is still soft tissue surgeons. Um, so you know, kind of a say a jack of all trades and say like I'm. And you know, the goal to come here was basically to get more um, uh, take off of the orthopedic imaging, so to speak. And you know, with the CT that's coming in the next year, hopefully that'll all put everything together. And that'll be phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. So so surgery, um, chiropractic podiatry. Um, you must see uh, remarkable changes with chiropractic. I know I've seen horses do very well with that. So I think it's wonderful that you can do that as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it doesn't fix everything, but I think it, it's part of the complete care you can give a horse. And I think the reality is, is that there are a lot of horses that may not need their joint injected, uh, but they, uh, but that's a common treatment because, you know, ba basically that's what they've had done all along, and I think the also the other problem is, is uh, and that's not a problem. The other thing chiropractors give you is basically increases the length of time some of these injections will actually help, especially in the axial skeleton, SIs, um, neck, back. And then that's the other thing is you know basically feet well as well because I think there's a lot of problems that uh, that happen in the upper limb or things that we treat in the upper limb that actually started in the foot. So that's kind of the way I look at it is, is I think, you know, that yes, there are a lot of lamenesses that, that, that may be the primary problem where they block out, but the, the, the initial onset actually happened either lower or higher in the joint. So I think that's kind of how I've kind of looked at a lot of these things. And uh, maybe at some point I'll actually get, um, you know, I've, I've gotten into rehab as well. I, I'm not rehab certified. I haven't got any course or um, anything like that, but it's kind of one of the things that I think you know, a lot of surgeons, you're very good at surgery, but uh, sometimes we don't look beyond the, beyond the, the you know, the knife and, and sutures and, and under anesthesia. So Very good point. Uh, the whole horse and whole wellness and, and being able to complement what you do uh, with additional care for the horse to make it as, as healthy as possible. So the whole horse, that's, um, that's fantastic. Um, last little comment that you'd perhaps like our listeners to know about you as a new veterinarian here. Uh, that's a tough one. Um, a lot of people, I think, in this area, some of them know me just from um, being up at the University of Florida, but largely, you know, uh, we're all new. Let's get started and go to work, really. I mean, I don't have anything majorly to add. So, well, Welcome. Uh, to Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. We're so glad you're here. Um, we're excited to to welcome you and to make your face uh, a face that people know. And uh, hopefully you'll join us on a Tuesday evening sometime. Yes, Dr. Andrew Smith here at Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Peterson Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care, and our broadcast sponsor, Larson Farms. Also, thank you to supporting sponsors, DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Seminole Feed Stores, Piranha, TT Distributors, and Midnight Rose Equestrian. This show is brought to you in part by Seminole Feed Stores, family-owned since 1934. 
manufacturing fixed formula horse feeds with mindful monitoring and quality ingredients right here in Ocala in an all-natural, non-medicated feed mill. Seminole Feed, simply the world's best and safest feed. Like them on Facebook now or find them at SeminoleFeed.com. Tired of the rigours of keeping your horse's water troughs clean and free of algae, you need the Drinking Post Waterer, an automatic waterer for horses, livestock and cattle, field tested for over 40 years. The Drinking Post Waterer is the gold standard of non-electric automatic waterers. Check them out on Facebook or find them on the web at dpwaterer.com. show broadcasts from the CEP's equine studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. Back on the Horse Talk Show, presented by Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. Thank you to Larson Farms, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa, and we certainly have uh, delivered a lot of that finest alfalfa down south, and we'll share more of that uh, story later. In the studio with me, Maria Lacasse from Midnight Rose Equestrian, massage therapist for equine and equestrian. And we have a couple of special guests in the studio. I have Carissa Wickens here, and there's initials after her name, which means she's really smart. <laughs> PhD, <laughs> PAS. Associate Professor Extension Equine Specialist, Department of Animal Sciences, University of Florida. That's a lot. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's lovely to have you here. And then we have a dear friend of ours to the show, and we talk about uh, the program that she's involved with almost every week, just about, mm -hmm. and that is Brenda Carrillo from the Heart of Florida Youth Ranch and the Equestrian Equine Program there. We're so fond of eight wonderful horses um, that are certainly helping the young people who are there in foster care. So I'd uh, love to have you with us. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. 
Uh, Carissa, tell us a little bit about what you do um, in your role, and then we're going to talk a little bit about a peanut hay project. Yes, um, so thank you. I, I am a faculty member in the Department of Animal Sciences. So I've been at the University of Florida for almost nine years now. It's going quickly, it feels like. Um, but it's, it's a fantastic role. So there's um, a few of us that serve as state extension equine specialists. Um, Dr. Sandra Tenbrick is also a faculty member in our department, so we're both state specialists. We also have Dr. Sally Donata at the U University of Florida uh, Large Animal Clinical Sciences at the vet school. She is our extension veterinary specialist. So the three of us get to work together quite a bit, um, but our role really is education. So we work with adult horse owners and youth uh, audiences, teaching them about horse safety, handling, management. A lot of our focus is on management and nutrition of horses. Um, so I also have a research appointment, so we get to do some research projects, um, but really get to network with the industry and, and work with our folks at their farms. So. That's really wonderful. We should definitely have you get more involved in the CEP equine network and maybe and have you come and speak. Um, to some of our groups because I think that would be very interesting, you know, especially research is something that people are interested in learning and, and one of the things that Dr. Kayot brought to my attention and, and then I studied it a little bit through AAEP was the concern about the lack of interest in being a horse veterinarian oh, yes. mm -hmm. yeah. and in the shortage that we might be facing mm -hmm. with that. So that's another topic that's uh, obviously very important, especially here in the horse capital of the world where we need Many veterinarians. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I, we, in our program in, in equine sciences, um, a lot of our students, um, well, some of them end up very much in the horse industry, but, um, you know, our, our, our program is focused on science, so some of our students are pre-vet, so they, they hopefully, you know, that, that is their goal. Um, we have others that will stay on for graduate programs and, and end up being future scientists, future researchers. Wow. Um, so that is, it's a lot of fun. It's really good. So let's talk a little bit about the peanut hay project. <laughs> so um, we, we actually, um, we've been very interested in what we call the rhizomal perennial peanut. Um, some of our agronomy faculty at UF have done some excellent work looking, um, really kind of focusing more on fresh perennial peanut. So intercropped into warm season grass pastures. So a lot of our horse farms here in Marion County have bahia, maybe some Bermuda grass in their pastures, um, but we can incorporate a legume like perennial peanut into those bahia grass pastures and it helps improve the nutritive value like the quality of that forage yeah it doesn't for the horses like to graze or something so yeah it's um like it's higher in crude protein um usually higher in energy and, and since it is a legume similar to alfalfa in that regard it, it's got more calcium um so calcium phosphorus ratio is, is is fairly good in terms of nutritive value for those horses so there's been a lot of work in beef cattle um horses there's not that much data out there on how the horses are responding to grazing these, these intermixed forages. Um, but it is a nice way to maybe extend the grazing season a little bit. Mm -hmm. But the big thing, um, how we were ha supported for this project was the Florida Department of Ag, their Office of Ag Water Policy, is very interested in reducing water quality impairment issues, protecting our water resources in Florida. Um, Marion County is home to Rainbow Springs, Silver Springs, mm -hmm. like so a lot of people Lots recreate. Of springs, yeah. springs are very <laughs> important to keep the, the water quality um, protected, not a lot of nutrient leaching. So one of the things with the forage projects that we can do is keep just overall better vegetative cover in mm -hmm. the pasture. So we don't have as much runoff. And yes, mm -hmm. like it'll help help prevent some of that, that runoff in the field, um, helps prevent erosion and some other issues. Um, but the great thing about the rhizomal or the perennial peanut is it also fixes nitrogen. So once we incorporate that into a grass pasture, we don't have to rely so much on commercial fertilizer. So adding nitrogen into the, the system, nice. the legume kind of helps do that for us. And so it can actually maybe improve the overall quality of that pasture. So yeah. And so in my, in my experience with peanut hay over the years is that, honestly, forgive me for saying this, it's a terrible expression to use, but my horses thought it was crack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> crack for horses. Yes, um. I mean, they were crazy about it. And, you know, the only thing I would probably say would be my only concern would be, you know, if you had a lot of it suddenly in the pasture, you'd obviously have to introduce your horses slowly to that pasture, right? So maybe half an hour, an hour, and let them build mm -hmm. up to that digestive change for them. But I can think of so many farms I've been on that have patchy fields mm -hmm. where not just the, the runoff, but also the horses picking up a lot of sand because the mm -hmm. sand was mixed in with the little bit of grass that was left. Mm -hmm. So filling in those patches with, with this, I can only see that as being 
extremely beneficial. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to have that in mm -hmm. at my farm that I sold recently is to be able to fill. Yeah. So we, um, I mean, again, we, one of my graduate students, um, Caroline Vasco, she just finished last August. This was a big Florida Department of Ag project. So there was multiple pieces to the project. Mm -hmm. So one, one part of the project was we actually did graze mature horses. So these were what we call maintenance horses, mm -hmm. not even really in light work. They were just living on the pasture. Mm -hmm. um, but we looked at body weights, body condition, looked at the forage quality, um, the amount of perennial peanut that was actually still staying at the end of the grazing season. So kind of looking at the horse response and the forage response. So that is a grazing kind of strategy. Mm -hmm. um, so we're kind of trying to expand that into some of these on-farm demonstrations, because now that we know that there's some promise there in terms of good forage quality, the horses seem to do pretty well on it. Um, now we want to make sure like proof of concept, right? Like, is it feasible for our horse farms, for our equine facilities mm -hmm. to actually establish this on their own? Right. Um, so kind of the how to, and yes. does it work? Yeah. So like, how does that go for like seeding? Do you have to like strip the whole fields before you start or do you? So with, with the rhizomal peanut, um, the variety that, that we've been planting, um, there's a couple different varieties, but the one that we've been working with is called EcoTurf. Um, so the, the EcoTurf rhizomal peanut, um, what we typically have done so far is strip plant it. So if you have an existing Bahia grass pasture, the idea is that yes, you come in and you kind of, um, we, we call it kind of burn back, but like you use some herbicide to kill strips of mm -hmm. the Bahia grass. You come through till that. Um, we did that twice actually, tilled it twice. So you have these open soil beds mm -hmm. and then you actually have to sprig it. Um, the rhizomal peanut does not propagate from seed typically we use the rhizomal material, like fresh material, mm -hmm. and sprig it and plant it into the ground. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that seems to work better from an early establishment mm -hmm. standpoint because now you can more like really focus on managing like weed control and kind of helping the peanut early on in those strips without really harming or having to do much with the nice Bahia grass strips. Mm -hmm. And then eventually the idea is that over time, the perennial mm -hmm. peanut starts to kind of spread and disperse throughout the pasture mm. but initially it's easier to manage as, right. as strips. and so you just keep the horses off of that for yes so that's, <laughs> now that's the there's the challenge yeah. that is the therein lies part. the challenge yes. Um, yes because yes like to early have early establishment be successful we really have to keep horses off at a minimum about a year mm. ideally maybe a bit longer than mm. that um so we hold that yeah. thought one second that was a horse yes. sound, which is a mm -hmm. sign of one minute, and which means we're down ah, to 30 okay. seconds. So do you mind staying with us for a second segment? Oh, is yes. that okay? Yeah. Okay, is that, that's good with the guys, right? They're in charge over here, <laughs> producer and director, thumbs up. We'll be right back on the second half of the Horse Talk Show. Stay with us. Current equine microchips can migrate by up to 30%, causing difficulty when scanning. With over 70 years of collective horse industry experience, Lipchip offers a new, more effective method of microchipping, partnering with veterinarians and technology experts to ensure humane and practical microchipping. Lipchip was built by horsemen for horsemen. Nowadays, the performance horse industry is in need of both integrity and transparency. Lipchip is the future of horse microchipping, with cutting edge technology functional for every discipline. Find Lipchip on social media and for more information, lipchipllc.com. The future is here. The future is Lipchip. This show is brought to you in part by DAC Vitamins and Minerals of Florida. All horses need a solid immune system, excellent joint support, a healthy gut, and DAC has all the vitamins and minerals they need with the NASC stamp of approval. So like them on Facebook now or go to feeddac.com. DAC. It makes a world of difference. World-class equine rehab promoting faster recovery is available at the Equine Performance Center Ocala. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy and underwater treadmill, a saltwater spa, an aquapesa, magna wave, a vibration plate, swimming pool, massage and laser therapies. With post-surgical care, memberships, packages and BOGOs, EPC delivers a rejuvenated horse through proven and innovative rehab. Like Equine Performance Center now on Facebook and find them on the web at epcrehab.com.
The Larson family has been farming hay in Idaho for generations with a mission to always provide high quality hay products at a fair and reasonable price. Larson Hay loves to meet new customers while always honoring the ones they already have. Find Larson Hay on the web at larsonhay.com, like them on Facebook, and definitely visit one of their locations. Larson Hay, Idaho's finest alfalfa, and our television broadcast sponsor. Welcome back to the Horse Talk Show. You never heard of a talking horse? Well, listen to this. <laughs> with your host, Louisa Barton. What does it feel like to be in love with a horse? Presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Back in the saddle again. Now, here's your pretty, pretty Louisa you're fab, you're switched on, you're a bit of all right, yes! <laughs> yeah, baby! Yeah. The Horse Talk Show broadcasts from the CEP's equine studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital. Back on the second half of the Horse Talk Show, presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Thank you to Larson Farms, our TV broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa, Louisa Barton, here in the studio with my co-host from Midnight Rose Equestrian, Maria Lacasse, massage therapist for the equine and the equestrian. She can make the two of you work together much better and much more smoothly and much more comfortably and perform at the best possible level you can with a good massage from her for both of you. Or just sleep really well. I'm yes. Sure that, yeah. Actually, uh, yeah, let's... Shall we not talk about how many times I've fallen asleep on her table and she hasn't woken me up until very late? <laughs> I do like a massage. Uh, we have some special guests here in the studio too. Um, that we've been chatting to Carissa Wickens is here with us and our friend Brenda from the Heart of Florida Youth Ranch, the equestrian program there uh, are with us. And we've been talking a little bit about this very interesting project, which I'm actually quite fascinated by having fed peanut hay mm -hmm. and, and as I mentioned, crack for horses. Um, <laughs> it's true they, though, they we moved do. from Washington they, and mm -hmm. we didn't have peanut hay and we no. came here and they're like, what alfalfa? And I was like, what? Yes. Okay, yes. that looks weird, but okay. Horses do love it. You know, the, the things I can see maybe just as a kind of a troubleshooting thought would be if you own a farm and you do this, when you put the farm up for sale and you're gonna move away, it needs to be in your real estate mm -hmm. notes. Mm -hmm. Um, only I only say that because it may be very rare, but like people can be allergic to peanuts. Mm. I'm guessing there could mm. be some horses, you know, that could be. So that would just be something I would think. And that I think of that as a realtor because I'm a realtor. So I just think, you know, that's something mm. that you would have to share with, with people. And could it be a negative to some? I don't know. Uh, there's always some people that can find negative in everything, right? So I'm all there, are, money there are those people, yeah. <laughs> no, but I think for, you know, the, the, the farms that we have that are in the more sandy areas that don't have the really nice loamy <laughs> soil, <laughs> you know, that when the closer you get to either coast, you know, you get more, more sand. We were down in South Florida quite a few times in the last couple of weeks, and I lived down there for near almost 10 years and we had sand pits you know uh, up here we're very blessed with you know fields that mostly are, are very nice but there are people who overgraze farms that have you know you go and move to a farm you bought and it's had 40 horses on 10 acres and and it was overgrazed and so you have these problems of these large patches that you know become mm -hmm. a problem and I think that this could definitely be a solution and that's that is definitely a challenge that we have with our sandy soils here in Florida, and and just yeah, it's it's kind of unfortunately it's it's easy to overstock and overgraze, mm -hmm. and so keeping good they're good, just good like potato and, and chips, actually, you can't have one. <laughs> utilizing the pasture in a way that that is good management, but also you know again a little bit easier maybe on your pocketbook and and some mm -hmm. other things that, that come into play. But that was actually when we um, were able to partner with Miss Brenda and Heart of Florida Youth Ranch. We were looking at um, having two sites, so we are there at the Heart of Florida Youth Ranch, 
they had um, basically a, a back field behind the barn that had been pretty much un un underutilized for yeah. the last few years. Um, so it was an opportunity to maybe expand into a different area of the property so that the idea eventually would be to put some horses on the new intercropped pasture and give the front pasture a little bit of a, a rest. Yeah. Um, do some management up there, maybe gra you know, graze the new field a little bit with a few of the horses so that we could do some rest and rotation. Um, so that's that's part of the strategy as well. Yes, and you know, uh, I've noticed that, that farming is probably not as big a focus here, and I don't wanna say that generally about everybody, but you know, when you're very focused on your horses mm -hmm. and training your horses mm -hmm. and you're thinking of, of those things and that is your focus, competing whatever sport you're in, I don't think that, that everybody necessarily thinks as much about mm -hmm. farming, yeah. you know, and it's a very important piece to managing your farm and being able to rest. If you have one large field or two large fields, being able to you don't want to break them all down into small areas or you'll end up with lots of little sand pits because horses mm -hmm. can tear up a small area, but more cross fencing so that you can give them a break. We go from soaking wet summer to extremely mm -hmm. dry winter here for the most part, most years. So during that time, it's very difficult if you have a 30 or 40 acre farm to irrigate the entire farm. Mm -hmm. And then you might be on water restrictions. You may not be able to use that much. So. Uh, and also then depending on what your well can handle, if you're on a well, you've got those issues as well. So f I think for horse people who are trying to balance our seasons mm -hmm. and and manage where whatever their focus is on as well as am I resting? Am I resting this mm -hmm. field? Am I resting? So the cross fencing idea and being able to rest a field. But if you're going to rest that field, being able to plant something that would mm -hmm. help fill in all those areas. And if you have a field that has patches everywhere of sand, they grow. You have a, I had a sandy patch, remember, in that one field mm -hmm. that the horses rolled in it. It was the only place they wanted to roll. And it was also the only place they wanted to take a nap. Mm -hmm. So that grew like... The loafing areas. Yes, like they, the yeah. loafing yeah. areas. Yes, I had some loafing areas. Yeah. But how nice if you could fill those in and reduce that, you know, and stop it from becoming such a huge area. Mm -hmm. So one of the challenges that, that we've have found a little bit with with just kind of testing this out and and again proof of concept kind of doing this on on a, a few cooperating farms um you know one of the challenges is that yes most of our especially our smaller equine properties or, or horse owners don't have a way to irrigate and so finding the right time to plant the rhizomal peanut normally we want to plant like in the early summer or we actually do like kind of a midwinter planting like maybe february and then hopefully, usually February is when we start to get a little bit of our rainfall back. And so that early peanut gets a little bit of rainfall. Um, it, it has done fairly well. It is starting to disperse and spread and the plants are growing at Brenda's site. We also have our other site in Elkton, Florida, and it's looking nice. But weed control and making sure like, you know, the weather needs to cooperate. And so I think those have been, you know, just realistically, those have been the biggest challenges for us. Um, just so when the you, resources. And, yeah, when you talk about the weed control, so... Obviously, weeds can kill off and crowd out anything, yes. including grass, if you have too much. Um, are there any recommendations for people for weed control and other mowing recommendations as well? Yes. As... Like spreading and yes. dragging yes. and all mm -hmm. that? Absolutely. So, um, again, right now, just during early establishment, um, there is a very specific herbicide um, that the actual chemical is amazepic, um, but there's some trade names, but that that's approved in Florida for early establishment to use as a herbicide, um, kind of, you know, carefully, selectively, mm -hmm. but just to help with that weed competition as those young little perennial peanut plants are just trying to get started. Um, but a lot of mechanical control as well. Um, these are two acre plots, and so it's not too hard to kind of try to keep up with, with some mowing. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we try to do just to keep some of that competition back and, and let that peanut have its chance. Now in this project, it, grazing obviously for um, horses and cattle, mm -hmm. Um, are, are people going to use this to grow it and cut it? And is it, or is it not so going can. to be a, you can? Um, okay. So that's, we do have some producers that are interested in, in establishing it for later hay harvesting. And again, there's some different varieties of perennial peanut that, that might be equally or better suited. So there's um, perennial peanut, there's flora grays, there's also Tito and peace varieties. And some of those are more specifically grown for hay production. Mm -hmm. um, the Echo Turf does, it, it hugs the, the sod a little closer. It doesn't grow usually as upright, um, but it's more 
hoof traffic and grazing tolerance. Mm -hmm. um, and again, some of the cattle studies have shown that, that it, it persists in a field mm -hmm. for a while. Um, once you establish it, and there is a, a process, it takes some money and some time to get it going. But once it gets going, it's pretty persistent, and it thrives even when we have those kind of wet or, or dry conditions. Wow, well, that flew by. Sorry. It's okay. No, oh, it's. Uh, like I mean, it's super today. informative. I know. No, we're. We, are you going to stick with us? We're going to talk a little bit about South yeah. Florida coming back. So. Okay. Yeah. Is that um, good? And yeah, I just. Um, I mean, Kate, we have our Caitlin's information. I didn't get a yes, chance to. Yes, so, we'll do that she, in the beginning of the next She's my livestock <laughs> agent go-to collaborator. Like Very she good. works with Brenda and I a lot, so I do want to. We'll get sure that, that mention in coming back after this Perfect. break. So okay. stay with mm -hmm. us on the horse talk show. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Palm Chevrolet, and broadcast sponsor, Larson Farms. Also, thank you to supporting sponsors, Equine Therapy International, Nirvana Medical Spa, the Equine Performance and Innovative Center, Summit Joint Performance, and Equigreen. This hour of the Horse Talk Show is presented by Palm Chevrolet in Ocala, where the entire team is committed to making your experience in sales and service hassle-free and easier than ever with no games or gimmicks. Come in and visit on Southwest College Road or online at palmchevrolet.com. A second-to-none experience with all the amenities. Palm Chevy, find new roads. For equine edutainment at its best, join the CEP and friends at the Florida Horse Park. October 22nd, 10 to 4 p.m. for the Hobby Horse Equestrian Games. Presented by Everglades Equipment Leesburg, your local John Deere dealer. Learn horse sports from the experts and compete from the safety of a stick horse. Enjoy a magnificent parade of horses, the vendor village, food trucks, and more. With free admission for all and for the best in horsing around, check out the Hobby Horse Equestrian Games on Facebook. Bring your stick horse or make one of your own while supplies last. See you at the park. Nirvana, Ocala's premier medical spa, is leading the way in great skin with all the newest in treatment options, offering prejuvenation for younger clients and rejuvenation for all ages. Nirvana knows you want to look your very best, but we've all seen people with the telltale signs of too much work. We want you to look like you, just better, brighter and younger, with all the newest and best in technology and all in the most beautiful surroundings. Like Nirvana Medical Spa on Facebook and find them on the web at nirvanamedicalspa.com. Become a better, brighter and younger you. Piranha, your trusted leader in insect control for 50 years. The official fly spray for World Equestrian Center. From the strongest water-based equine spray in the blue bottle to the familiar and longtime favorite in the yellow bottle. Wipe and spray, we've got you covered. If you're looking for effective plant-based fly spray, then look for our zero bite in the green bottle. Check us out online at piranhainc.com. That's P-Y-R-A-N-H-A, piranhainc.com, to learn more about Piranha's entire family of products. Piranha, it works. My name is Dr. Natalie Solomon. I formulated Equigreen with cutting edge science and technology alongside the passion that is represented by a lifelong love of horses. I created a product that I would trust for my horses because they deserve nothing but the best for their bodies. Horses rely on us to take care of them, to love them, to respect them. This is how Equigreen came to life. Equigreen, CBD for your horse that you can trust. The Horse Talk Show broadcasts from the CEP's equine studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. back on the horse talk show presented by palm chevrolet your hometown chevy experience thank you to larson farms our broadcast sponsor idaho's finest alfalfa and we're going to chat a little bit more about them in a few minutes but first of all we want to get a shout out in for yes <laughs> <laughs> um, caitlin Bainham is our marion county livestock agent um so she she works in both equine and cattle but helps producers um, implement best management practices for manure and pasture management on farms here so she is also a huge collaborator and wonderful partner um, that has helped brenda and i with this demonstration project and i think we have her finish. info too that we can pop up here on the screen um 
in just a second we'll have her information so she's done a lot to help yes yes and she is very active orchestrate. in in the equine and cattle community here um she also is an employee she works for university of florida ifas in extension um so yeah we we get to do a lot of programming and educational workshops and things together um so she's definitely our right hand gal in, yes. in the project yes for shout out for her and if guys are looking for info he's going to find it and if not Gigi will find it um, but we'll put it up here on the screen if you're watching either on Facebook or on Equus Television um, Caitlin has done a phenomenal job helping you to coordinate all of that so uh, we mentioned allergies of peanuts and, and it not being literally like peanuts yes. like peanut butter um, but I, I actually have met a couple of people who told me their horses were allergic to peanut hay and so I'm guessing that mm -hmm. either it's the the allergy to something in it that's different or it could just be horses being horses um, because they you introduce something new you always have to do it slowly uh, with horses we always have to intro a little bit mm -hmm. um, at a time and uh, and slowly so never do anything quickly if you do decide to try uh, you know uh, i know at times larson hay has had peanut hay in i don't know if they do right now i need to text betsy and ask her and it's been phenomenal and my horses loved it but i will say sunny my older horse who was much older uh, the first time he tried it probably in his late 20s the first time he had peanut hay he did have a little bit of the runs and a little bit of a loose stool mm -hmm. even with me introducing it slowly but you're also talking about a much older horse who was in his late 20s and had never had it at that point. So I would say if your horse gets a little bit of diarrhea or runs or something from it, just back off, go less, and then try again because sometimes it simply is just new. We do talk about, like, I mean, I think a lot of horse owners, we think about changing the grain gradually, but it's the same for the forage. Absolutely. Like if, if your horse yes. is used to having coastal or, or if they've always been on alfalfa and then, yes, you switch, like doing that, that switch has to be gradual too because all yes. those little microflora in their hindgut mm -hmm. say, what is this? And yes. They have to kind of mm -hmm. adapt yes. so that you, you can see that. You can indeed. And uh, before I forget, everybody loves the magically disappearing <laughs> bags. There are actually yeah. bags in my hands here. I don't know if you can see these. <laughs> Um, they do actually say piranha on them 50 years but we have goodie bags for you here that are full of uh full of goodies to try from piranha all their nice um shines and you can make your arabian shine and the legacy and and then there's nice little piranha combs in here so those are for you guys thank before you. i forget thank you. <laughs> thank you piranha very much but we always like to give our guests goodie bags on air you know and those are nice bags thank you really thank nice you, bags. and actually speaking of piranha changing the subject just for a minute uh the i didn't uh, i meant to send this photo to gg and i forgot uh, but kylie sent me a photograph of the piranha um, products arriving in south florida yesterday and it's so needed with all the standing water and the mosquitoes and the and the flies and everything so fantastic that piranha's huge big um pallets full of products and supplies for south florida did did go down there and i, I do want to touch on that is there anything else that you want to tell us about this project that you think is really important for our listeners to? Um, I think, you know, again, we, we really want to, we want to protect our water resources in Florida. We want to take good care of our horses. And, our, you know, as much as we're horse people, we have to learn a little bit of grass science too. And you mentioned that, yes. so like understanding the farm management yeah, side. Farming. And mm -hmm. um, um, sometimes that part is challenging, but that's, IFAS Extension is here to help. So when people have questions or if, you know, we're, we're going to try to have some other educational days, um, we try to do field days. We have our wonderful agronomy faculty that we partner with a lot. Um, so there's, you know, there's ways that we can get information out to the listeners um, as far as like upcoming programs, workshops, fact sheets, things that can help them with their equine management and their farms. I yes, know, I'm interested. I'm like, where's the link? Cause yes. I could use it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and you know, it is, the, it is the missing, it is the missing link. And and the other thing I think that happens here a lot is when people come here, they've heard about our grass and our soil. And they think, oh, well, I'm going to buy a farm here and it's going to be green and lush and I'm not going to have any problems. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have to do anything with it. But they forget that I lived in Morriston. Mm -hmm. I lived in Fort McCoy. You know, I've been on both sides of the, the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And in Morriston, I had issues with large sand patches, issues with grass that horses, bless them, will eat the shortest grass rather than this yes. nice big long grass that you think, oh, I've got grass, and they are eating. <laughs> They're pulling out of the ground with roots attached and sand <laughs> hanging off this little short, you know, yeah, nothing yeah. grass, yeah. right? So the problem with that is a number of things. One, it pulls it out by the root, which means that grass is then not going to come back. 
And secondly, they like to give themselves sand colic because they then wolf it down with the sand attached and 100 pounds of sand later, you're at the veterinarian clinic with a big problem. So, you know, not is it not only is it great for the horses to have a great forage to graze on, but you also may be preventing yourself from having a large vet bill. Um, <laughs> you also could be reducing your hay costs because you don't have to hay as much as quick right, in like the winter. That was one of the biggest things. I moved from Washington, which is a big hay producer, and I came here and I'm like, what do you mean I have 19 acres and I can't feed my two horses <laughs> on it? Like, what yeah. I have grass, but yeah. they're looking kind of sad, so we like Larson's. Yes. <laughs> but, well, at least it's, listen, when we went to South Florida with those big semis of hay, yeah. The people that were coming to pick it up were like, oh, I don't think my horse has ever had hay that looks like that before. <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. What? Where'd you get that hay? <laughs> it's like, uh, you know. But it, it is a thing that, it's, obviously, it's a lot more expensive. You have to supplement your horses a lot more in the wintertime um, with hay because of the grass. So if you have, you know, more grass, Question. that's fantastic. Sorry, how does yeah. that work in winter? Like, do you take them off it during the winter? So, yeah, I mean, our when our warm season grasses go dormant, and we're almost getting there because our day length is shortened, we're going to start getting, like, these low, these drops in temperature. So, like, yeah, all of our warm season grasses are kind of like they've passed their peak. Like, July, August, when we're wet and warm and long days, that's, that's the peak growing season. The nice part about, and again, like, this area of Ocala and Florida in general, we can overseed, like, we can, we can put out ryegrass or some other cool season forages to extend that grazing season and again keep good vegetative cover um, so again that's a whole nother area um, Caitlin does some projects and some demonstration sites with the cool season forages we actually did plant for a period of time some ryegrass legend oat and some red clover at Brenda's site at Hartford mm -hmm. Youth Ranch while mm -hmm. we were waiting on our rhizomal peanuts so mm -hmm. like over the winter last winter we had a cool season grazing like we're not we didn't graze horses they wasn't ready for that but we just as a demo um, just to keep something in those like empty strips until we could get the peanut in and then those kind of died back late april and um you know so we didn't really have to do much with those and we put the peanut mm -hmm. in amongst those and it works really well so it really is a good way to extend that grazing season and keep good vegetative cover on your farm it's really been a huge honestly it's been a huge problem and thought in in my head for quite some time about you know what, what do we do about this you know how do we uh, and even visibly, if you're a little bit vain about the way your farm looks, you know, <laughs> like aesthetically, it is it nice. Is. Yeah, it, I mean, if you're a little nice. bit like, I don't like the way that looks. I mean, there, there's mm -hmm. the basics of, of that, too, before you even get to, like, cost and horses grazing. And obviously, a horse is a grazing animal, mm -hmm. and that is what they do prefer to do. So um, <laughs> it definitely makes sense to keep the horse mm -hmm. in the most natural environment, have its head yes. down and, and be grazing. So that noise, again, the horse uh, is letting us know we talk too much. Yes. Uh, but we're going to come back and wrap it up. And the last segment, we're going to talk a little bit um, about our South Florida trips and the wonderful people who've been part of that. And we'll just keep our guests with us till the end because, you know, one segment turned into four. It happens. We'll be right back. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Palm Chevrolet, and broadcast sponsor, Larson Farms. Also, thank you to supporting sponsors, Equine Therapy International, Nirvana Medical Spa, the Equine Performance and Innovative Center, Summit Joint Performance, and Equigreen. Hi, I'm Alan Davies with Equine Therapy International. Today, we're at Engineered Equine Performance, celebrating the new saltwater chilled treadmill. This particular chilled equine saltwater treadmill is a game changer. As you can see, the finest materials are used, the filtration system, coarse, fine filtration, no chemicals. We use UV, ozone, combination of the filtration to keep the highest water chemistry standards. Being a saltwater unit, only the finest stainless steel and materials are used. That's important when it comes to longevity and cost of service over the life of the unit. This unit also has integrated massage jets with fine bubbles and coarse air bubbles for the therapy. The control system on this is Siemens industrial grade, top of the line technology, straight from Germany, but also serviceable here in the US.
world-class equine rehab promoting faster recovery is available at the Equine Performance Center Ocala. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy and underwater treadmill, a salt water spa, an aqua pacer, magna wave, a vibration plate, swimming pool, massage and laser therapies with post-surgical care, memberships, packages and BOGOs. EPC delivers a rejuvenated horse through proven and innovative rehab. Like Equine Performance Center now on Facebook and find them on the web at epcrehab.com. This show was brought to you in part by TT Distributors, dedicated to bringing their customers the largest selection of quality horse supplements, products, and farrier supplies in Florida at affordable prices. Also online at ttdistributors.com. This show is brought to you in part by Summit Joint Performance, promoting a healthy, thick synovial fluid, decreasing inflammation in the joints and improving the cushioning properties of the cartilage pads. All age horses can benefit from Summit Joint Performance. Maria Lacasse of Midnight Rose Equestrian's background is in natural horsemanship and dressage principles with a main focus on maintaining a balance of communication and correct biomechanics between horse and rider. Come to her farm or she'll come to yours. Allow Maria to help you and your horse to unwind and balance to increase performance so that you can both be the best you can be together to build a lifelong partnership of success. Maria Lacasse of Midnight Rose Equestrian is a graduate of the Equine Natural Movement School for Equine Structural Integration and a Florida School of Massage graduate. Find Midnight Rose Equestrian on social media and on the web at midnightroseequestrian.com and book your massage for your horse and you right away. The Horse Talk Show broadcasts from the CEP's equine studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. Back on the last segment this week of the Horse Talk Show, presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Thank you to Lars of Palms, our broadcast sponsor. Idaho's finest alpha mm -hmm. in the studio with me, yeah. Midnight Rose Equestrian's Maria Lacasse, okay. massage therapist for equine and equestrian to make you both work mm -hmm. together so much better and win, right? Yes, not the goal. <laughs> <laughs> and then I do have Carissa Wickens here and Brenda Carujo from the Heart of Florida Youth Ranch and Chris is with the UF Extension Service and has lots of initials and lots of qualifications <laughs> and has given us an extremely um, educational piece. I know, I on love it. I'm such a nerd and I'm like... <laughs> I know, you want to probably honestly come in like once a month and do like a little mm -hmm. segment for us on things like Creeping Indigo. I mean, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear, I have our I audience... Know what that is. Oh, you should. It's very important. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh, and that would be great. Like we come in, and we could do a topic, or even every couple of months we do a topic on. That'd be things. fantastic. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think we, that would we'd be, be happy. Yeah, um, Dr. Samantha Brooks is our equine genetics, uh, mm. genetics geneticist. Um, but she's been doing some really cool research with her graduate students and some of our undergrad students. Um, but looking at sport horse mm -hmm. health and genetics. Um, so yeah, we. We have a few people in the department that I think just different expertise, different yeah. topics. Yeah. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. But we, we would love to. That would be yeah, fantastic. I think, honestly, on the farming end of things, that I really feel like horse people really lack mostly. Now, we, we have some that come from a cattle background that, that mm. or a hay background where they had family who did a they lot of farming. Know, like, yeah, and they that seems to be kind of just born. They're born with it, mm -hmm. you know. But I think horse people generally who compete like at higher levels, do not have a real awareness of farming and, and the different practices that help mm -hmm. to keep your farm as healthy as possible mm -hmm. for you and your horses. I think it's a, I think it's a huge topic, yeah. you know. But let's touch on oh aftermath of wretched Ian, who I don't know if anybody will call her baby Ian for years to come. Um, the first thing I want to say is Mallory Wheeler, um, who I don't believe I have ever met in person, but is one of those friends on Facebook that you kind of get to know through social media and. Um, she had an absolutely amazing horse by the name of Rogue, mm -hmm. who she had had for about 12 mm -hmm. or 13 years, I think, and I think he was about 23 or so. And um, he was uh, went missing and uh, during the storm, and he was with a donkey that they actually found the donkey under a tree. Unfortunately, the donkey was, was, was fine um, and recovered after that, but uh, he was not found. And I have never in my life 
met anybody else except perhaps myself that would have gone to the effort to find this horse that um, that she did and Mallory had drones out and airboats out and people um, honestly I think she ended up with a million people following this story who all pitched in and kept offering their services to help her um, find Rogue and hoping uh, obviously to find him um, alive and well somewhere either with a neighbor or, or perhaps in the woods or somewhere but very sadly he was found um, and was already deceased from from Ian from the storm and um, our prayers and thoughts absolutely go out to Mallory. I um, I was actually sitting waiting for my oil to be changed when I read that Rogue had been found and I cried like a baby in the waiting room at the oil change place so I'm sure people were probably thinking what is wrong but um, uh, I just mm -hmm. I want uh, you know Mallory I've, I've messaged her and told her that you know I lost the love of my life last year in June and um, I know what it's like to l lose a horse that you love so much so um, well done for all your efforts trying to find him with dedication not giving up on him as many would have given up after the number of days that you searched and uh, I can't even imagine the heartache uh, for South Florida for the loss of life both people and animals and it's just been just a, a devastating time but we have a lot of people to thank who um, Betsy Oakwa from Larson Hay who went with me the very first day hours after the storm passed through before I think uh, civilians were perhaps even supposed to be in the area and um, <laughs> Betsy and I were on a mission, so and we actually went to help one lady um, who we knew was in need through a friend on Facebook who messaged me and said, I heard you were the person to talk to about this, and I have a friend who needs help with 32 horses. So Betsy and I uh, reached out to Richard Larson of Larson Hay, uh, and he immediately gave us $7,500 worth of hay to take south, which we did. And on our return um, from helping this lady, we called Richard to give him an update, and he doubled the hay and said there's obviously a greater need and we found even on Morningside Drive where we were to help the one lady we found multiple other people just on that road alone who needed help with horses so then began the effort immediately to um, to keep going back and Betsy and I bravely went back the next day that's Manny uh, Manny Tamini is the owner of um, Black Horse Farm in North Fort Myers who became uh, immediately a major distribution point and you want to talk about a heart of gold mm -hmm. this man has an absolute heart of gold for people and their horses and he has um, very very uh, carefully and very well managed everything that we have sent to him and we have sent him everything from feed hay diapers not for horses um, for people and um, uh, uh, we've sent him fencing we've sent him um, used goods that people donated to the Florida Horse Park for us and um, he and Kylie Mankey who keeps her two horses there at his barn uh, have have very fairly distributed uh, items to uh, numerous people who have cried their eyes out. I have been hugged and cried on um, by very grateful people who have lost everything. Many of these people down south were unable to get insurance on their barns uh, many were unable to get flood insurance, which is huge because everything flooded. Mm. And um, that's the fencing, which I, I'd love to do a shout out for the company, but I don't remember the name. But they sold the fencing to us at cost for South Florida. And we were able to pick up over $17,000 worth of fencing and mm. deliver that um, over the past few days. And another load is going down on Friday. Many people completely lost all their fences. Um, were completely wiped out and one lady I met on Saturday down there said I think my horses are staying because they like me because mm -hmm. I don't have any fencing and people lost barn roofs and um, that's Kylie uh, salt of the earth she actually drove some of the Larson hay over to Cape Coral um, to a pony club or horse club over there who had two tornadoes touch down during the hurricane and completely wiped out the entire place. Thankfully, the horses had been evacuated or they would have all been gone. Um, so I think we are up to about seven trips so far or eight trips um, south with um, with items. Betsy and I, I think I, I shared with you, Betsy and I got stuck on I-75 for about, took us about 12 hours to get back to Ocala as the rapids were coming in beside us and 30 miles of I-75 was closed down as a levee. Uh, 
a levy burst, um, Everglades Equipment, Leesburg, your local John Deere dealer, uh, Michael Sleeper very kindly got this semi for me and provided uh, that for us and set everything up. And that is um, Willie's semi uh, service transport, did an absolutely fantastic job for us there uh, at the Florida Horse Park. And Jason Reynolds has been amazing. Uh, at the Florida Horse Park. He's allowed people to come by and make donations and drop off products and, and things all under one covered pavilion for us that we've been able to go and load up. Uh, Wayne Davis Bedding uh, gave us two semi loads of bedding that were delivered on the second day to help dry out people's stalls that were still so wet from the flooding. Um, and all, all together, I think between our GoFundMe and the CEP's foundation, um, that has allowed donations to come in. I think we've had over $55,000 worth of cash donations that have come in that 100% has been put um, to to the cause. And I think another probably 40,000 of products and services. TT Distributors gave us $4,000 worth of goods. It's been amazing. Wow. That was the noise that means I have to be quiet and go away. <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much. I want to thank everybody, Mark Cassie, everybody who's um, helped us help those people in need. Uh, that was the GoFundMe up there on the screen. Uh, please keep giving because we have so much more help to take south. So thank you guys so much for being with us this week, whether you're in Ocala, Marion County or not. Happy horsing around to the same time next week.